Hi friends, welcome you all to the debut video of 10 Minute Medico. We will kick start with the topic Neural Regulation of Respiration. The neural regulation includes the central as well as the peripheral neural regulation. We will proceed with the central regulation first. The centers of respiration are present in the brain stem. There are two centers in the pons, namely the pneumotaxic center in the upper pons and the apneustic center in the lower pons. In the medulla, ventrally lies the ventral group of neurons and 5 mm postromedially lies the dorsal group of neurons. The neurons of pneumotaxic center lies in the nucleus parabethalis, the ventral group in the nucleus ambiguous and retroambiguous and the dorsal group in the nucleus tractus solitarius. Coming to the dorsal group of neurons, the dorsal group of neurons are concerned mainly with inspiration by supplying the diaphragm and the external intercostals. They produce a peculiar signal called the RAM signals. The RAM signals are not sharp signals, rather they are gra graded signals which increase in intensity for a period of around 2 seconds and stop suddenly for a period of 3 seconds. The slow increase helps in graded contraction of the diaphragm which causes steady and active inspiration. During the pause period of 3 seconds, there occurs a passive expiration due to the elastic recoil of the lung. Two characters of the RAM can be changed. The first one is the rate of increase of RAM signal. This results in faster breathing, but the depth of inspiration remains the same. The second one is the cutoff point. Earlier cutoff leads to faster breathing, but the depth of inspiration here is very less. Coming to the apneustic center, the basic function is to stimulate the dorsal group of neurons. This postpones the cutoff point of the RAM signals, resulting in increased depth of respiration but lowered respiratory rate. Next is the pneumotaxic center, which basically is an inhibitory center. It inhibits the apneustic center and thereby switching off the RAM signals early. This results in increased respiratory rate but shorter inspiration. Finally, the ventral group of neurons, which are mainly concerned with expiration. They supply expiratory muscles like the abdominal muscles and internal intercostals. They are inactive during normal breathing, but whenever there is an increased respiratory drive, these are activated and hence result in forceful expiration. There is also a theory which suggests that the ventral group contains two different groups of neurons, one concerned with expiration and the other concerned with inspiration. These are the central neural control of respiration. The peripheral system contains receptors in the lungs, such as the stretch receptors, which carry information to the brainstem via the vagus, and they inhibit the dorsal group of neurons. So, whenever there is overinflation of the lung, these receptors are activated, and they inhibit the dorsal group of neurons thereby preventing further stretching of the lung. This is a protective mechanism which prevents the lung from overinflation and this is called the herring gruber reflex. This reflex acts only when the lungs are inflated about three times the normal tidal volume. Hence, it is just a protective reflex and has no role in the regulation of normal respiration. There are other receptors such as the irritant receptors which when activated by irritants cause coughing as well as sneezing. There are some other receptors called J receptors or juxtacapillary receptors which are in close proximity to the pulmonary capillaries. These receptors are activated during pulmonary congestion due to congestive cardiac failure or pulmonary edema and they cause tachypnea, bradycardia and hypotension which together are called the pulmonary chemoreflex. 
Let us also know a little about the effect of lesions of various centers. Consider this graph to be the normal respiratory rhythm. When there is a lesion above the pons, there is no net effect on the rhythm even when the vagae are damaged. But lesion between the pneumotactic center and apneostic center will cause increased depth of inspiration because the termination of inspiration here depends only on the stretch information carried by the vagus. When the vagus is also transected, there is no feedback for ending inspiration and this leads to prolonged inspiratory spasm which is called apneusis. When there is a damage between the pons and the medulla, the control of rhythm by the pneumotaxic and apneustic centers are lost and this results in irregular breathing, irrespective of the state of the vagus nerve. When there is a damage below the medulla, the total output from the centers are lost and this results in total apnea. Hope you people find this video useful and if you want more such videos, please do subscribe to the channel and comment below the topics which you would like to have the videos on. Thank you.